But I definitely will refer the case off for litigation because you guys can't even prove you own a loan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's serious. And again, that's going to the 866-590-9810 number. Did, did it just evaporate or I like... Did it just evaporate or, you know, it's just like we go through this all the time. And I, I just, it's, somebody's got to be contacting us because we've been trying to work with them and they're just going behind our backs. It feels like it's like, a you know, dual tracking going on and that's unlawful. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's not okay. It's definitely not okay. Remember the Wells Fargo case in New York uh, where bankruptcy judge Drain uh, railed on Wells Fargo and allowed attorney uh, uh, Torelli to admit into evidence uh, the nasty little foreclosure manual. Well, uh, more of the same here. Uh, basically, we're trying to close out an alleged debt that uh, Wells Fargo cannot prove ownership of because it came from Deep Green back in my hometown of Cleveland, Ohio, when Deep Green went under, okay? Uh, and there are a couple of allonges there uh, from them, one of which is endorsed in blank, and the other one, which goes straight to Wachovia, okay? Which, of course, you know, Wells Fargo was allegedly the successor in interest to Wachovia, okay? All right. But the problem is, uh, because we asked for proof of ownership uh, and a qualified written request, and we got both of these allonges. So I said, which one was attached to the note? They come back and they say, oh, it was the one in blank, because they can't produce the original note. But that doesn't make sense, because it should have been the allonge specifically naming Wachovia, right? Right. But they did it that way because it was endorsed in blank. They have a greater chance of uh, arguing with the lost note affidavit that they basically had bearer paper, and that they now majestically have standing and real party and interest to foreclose if they should uh, so choose to exercise that option. Now, it's crap, and that's why Maureen Bodine, who is now a big muckety-muck at U.S. Bank, basically ran for my questions, but it's coming right back at her and everybody else in this video. And then, uh, keep listening to the call here, to add insult to injury, they can't even answer a simple question as to whether or not a notice of default was issued, you know, while we're trying to reach settlement. And, and, and that would smell a lot like uh, dual tracking. You know, I still haven't heard back. It's been a couple of weeks now. Answer my question! The question, jerk! Whew, God. Anyway, my videos piss a lot of people off, and I don't really care. You know, some governments and judges have gone so far as to say that I don't have a constitutional right to shoot them in their uh, public buildings either, uh, including the Registry of Deeds in Kent County, uh, Delaware. Uh, uh, they refuse to allow me to run video there. Uh, and also, they refuse to allow me to video my own court hearing in blatant violation of Supreme Court Rule 155, uh, which specifically authorizes that type of video. But Commissioner Andrea Freud misstated the law and cut me off when I went to clarify it. Uh, just, it's King Cass versus McKenna in Kent County. Just Google it. Uh, because federal judges in New Jersey to the north and Georgia to the south have both slammed that notion. In the Pommy Cats versus Borough of West Wildwood case, and just last year, uh, down in Georgia, in Tisdale versus uh, Gravit. Um, and there was a $200,000 settlement there. But Delaware pissed on my $12,000 uh, offer of settlement and got a judge to slam me. Uh, what is this judge's name? Uh, what the hell is this guy's name? I can't remember right now. Whatever. Judge, do what you want. Uh, you know, to slam me without even addressing the Pommy Cats case at all, which I briefed. And then telling me that it was also clear that I didn't have a First Amendment right. Yeah, well, we're going to see about that, too. Now, back to this case. I need to record this so I can cover my tracks on this because now that I know that this is allegedly going toward foreclosure, I know that we have been sending information out. We were last told directly to contact Yvette Hastings. I sent a fax out to her um, maybe a week or two ago about this. And, you know, there's still these issues with the, the allonges are not correct. There's a chain of title issue. And... Um, Nobody's talking with us here about the settlement, but they're trying to foreclose. And they, they're, you tell me that there's an acceleration that happened on the 15th of, of uh, June. And it is now the 24th of June. And you nor I have this information about any acceleration. So there's a lot of unanswered questions here. And we need to make sure that Yvette Hastings contacts me so we can talk about it. Because... We don't want to litigate this. This is going to be an ugly case. More, more so for, for you guys than it is for the... But I definitely will refer the case off for litigation because you guys can't even prove you own the loan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's serious. Deep yeah. Green went under and God knows there's two different allonges. One of them... I can't even get into it right now. 
But yeah, Yvette Hastings should be calling me. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and reach out to a vet, like um, I stated before, or someone in home preservation so that she can get in contact with them about their loan modification. Well, not a modification. We're looking for a settlement. But in any event, whatever the case, somebody's going to be contacting us because we've been trying to work with them, and they're just going behind our backs. It feels like it's like a you know dual tracking going on, and that's unlawful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. So I'm going to try and get in contact with these vets, and then I'm going to um, you have been able to reach her, but I'll I'll try um, one one more time, and then I'll um, get you in contact with another representative so you can know what's going on with this modification. Hi, Christopher. Yes. Thank you so much for patiently holding. I do have Natalie here on the line for home preservation. You should be able to assist you with any questions or concerns that you may have at this time. Okay. Thank you so much for patiently holding, and you guys have a great day. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Hi, Mr. King. Yes. Hi. How are you, Natalie? Mr. King, how are you there? I'm here. Good. I'm good. How about yourself? Good, good. Um, yeah, what can you tell me about the status here and the, the inquiries we've been sending out? And, you know, we've been reaching out repeatedly and haven't heard anything back, and now I hear that this thing's being accelerated, so... Uh, we're kind of uncomfortable with that. <clears throat> You're hearing what? <clears throat> we're hearing that it's been accelerated, and we're kind of uncomfortable with that, given the status of everything. And, and you know, we don't know what's going on with our request for settlement or anything. And, you know, we, we sent the letter out to, the, to Yvette Hastings a couple of weeks ago. I sent uh, a fax out and haven't heard anything back. The 15th at 2.59 p.m. June 15, 2.59 p.m. And again, that's going to the 866-590-9810 number. Did, did it just evaporate or like... I'm sorry, go ahead. Did it just evaporate or, you know, it's just like we go through this all the time. And I, I just... It's, yeah. Yeah, we've been trying to settle this case. And... Uh, there are some serious title issues on this. It came from Deep Green. There's no proof of ownership, and there's two different allonges in the file, and these are all problematic. So we've offered to settle it during the hardship. So we put in for a settlement, as I always do. I mean, I do about, I don't know, six of these a year, perhaps, and you know, usually they resolve themselves. Once but I only take people who really have hardships and who have issues, and that kind of people, a good Christian family. Um, they give back to the community. Their house is not. Their house also, by the way, was wrongfully appraised, and we've proved that. And that's also part of the letter. So it's not worth what they say it is. And we we had a, a, a BPO set out on that. A broker wrote up an opinion about uh, what the house is truly worth. So all of this stuff is out there, and it's been out there, but we're not getting any responses to that. But now I find out that we're allegedly going to be accelerated and set in for foreclosure. And to me, that sounds a little bit like dual tracking. Um, so I mean, what can we do here? Who can, do I need to resend that letter to your attention so that it can okay. be, be reviewed or what? All right. So, um, I, I did, I did sign the letter. I apologize. It wasn't pulling up when I first pulled up the loan. Um, so I did sign the letter that you sent in. Okay. Um, the correct, um, individual, uh, will be assigned to this letter to respond to you. Okay. okay? Um, I am in home preservation. Okay. What my job is is to get a modification uh, review done. That's what that's what I do. Right. I'm aware that there was a modification process going on, uh, but that was not what we were seeking. That we made that clear, and so the, co the conversation continued in terms of an uh, an outright settlement. Oh, I don't know if that's... Especially what department you're in right now. What department you're in right now is modification. Right, so I don't know why it's still there. That would be an internal issue with you guys. You know, but we've been very clear all along that we weren't seeking a mod. We were looking to settle it. There's, there's been tons of correspondence uh, on the file. So I don't know why it would still be in this department as opposed to 
uh, the settlement department? Um, well, I think that the Essentially, right now, the modification is being removed from our department. It is now being escalated to be removed from our department. Okay. Um, as far as settling the loan, that is not my area of expertise. Right. That's not what we do. That's not the department that you're talking to right now. Okay. Um, so, essentially, what needs to happen is it needs to be removed from our department, mm -hmm. and you need to wait for a response to your letter. Okay. Uh, do you know how long that would take? What can I expect? Maybe... End of next week, perhaps, or perhaps, um, and even sending in another letter, just blankly saying, "This is, you know, this is what we want." Okay. Um, not not a bunch of not a bunch of what coulda, shoulda, woulda, but this is what we want. What do we need to do? Well, I don't know what you mean by the woulda, shoulda, coulda. I mean, I'm just talking strictly. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, no, I'm, I, I didn't mean to stir up any, anything. I didn't mean to stir up anything. Okay. I don't know what, I haven't read the letters that you sent. Okay. And, well, the other letters are in the file, because it's all kind of wrapped up. The whole, the history of the loan has issues, so that's kind of already been said before, and we've articulated our demands or our requests uh, in that letter. Um, so maybe I'll put together another one, but it, it's, it's all definitely in the letter, but if I'll send a short form out, maybe a paragraph just saying, hey, this is what's been going on, and this is what we're looking for, so... I can do that, but meanwhile, I hope someone on your end is working working on it, and I'll send that letter out tomorrow, and hopefully I'll, I'll hear from someone next week then. Yes, hopefully. Um, please understand, I do need to let you know that while we're on the phone that the foreclosure status is active. However, there is no sale date at this time. Right, okay, so as, as an active foreclosure then, I mean, has there been a notice of default issued to the homeowner? Uh, when it became active, yes, there was a notification that would have gone out to the homeowner. Okay, now, that notification you're saying, is it a notice of default or is it a different a type of a warning notification? What do you mean? Well, a notice of default is a term of art in Washington, and it, it's very specific. And so when a notice of default goes out, that, you know, obviously triggers a number of different things immediately. But if it's just a a notice saying, hey, we, you know, you're delinquent, that's a different issue. So I, I need to find out what it is. Because legally, I have to be able to either put them in the hands of a licensed attorney or I have to tell them what's happening with the account. Essentially, when the, when the, when you were approved, when the borrowers were approved for a modification, the foreclosure status was suspended. When now we are denied for the modification, it went back to active. Okay. And we would have sent out a, a notice to the borrower. Right. Saying your, your new status on your foreclosure is now active. Okay, but what I'm getting at, though, is a crucial question. It's, it's got to be, you know, it's a milestone. Was a notice of default sent or not? Well, I'd have to look through all the documents that were sent out. If you want to wait, I can definitely look through all that. That'd be important, yes. Okay. Give me just a moment here. Okay. All right. The very last notification that says, um, we attest that we've reviewed this loan and to the best of our sense that um, available loss to the mitigation alternatives have been exhausted and a non foreclosure outcome could not be reached. That is the very last letter that came out. And that was on. On six, I'm sorry, the date on that letter again? Six ten of 15. Okay, so, but meanwhile, we've never received any response back to our letters, so that's problematic. Uh, yeah. I understand. We received that letter. I can detest that we received that letter on 615. Right, that one, but there were other ones before, and I guess no, nobody... My department will not yeah. be the, the department okay. to respond to that letter. Oh, Okay. All right, then. Uh, I appreciate your phone call and the information you've given, and I, I will send another letter out tomorrow that kind of s sum summarizing this conversation and where I believe we're at, and hopefully somebody will call me back next week and, and we'll see what's going on because there, we got a single point of contact. Well, on June 8th, there was a primary point of contact to Yvette Hastings, and that, that's when you know we've been trying to reach out to her, but she hasn't reached back. So. 
event Hastings is, is your single point of contact for a modification review. Right. Anything outside of that, you will be assigned someone else. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, we look forward to that happening, and uh, hopefully Does that. that makes sense? Yeah, that's fine, and we hope that there's no de notice of default issued while we're trying to negotiate this. That's the other thing. So, I'll 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 send a letter out and wait to hear back. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much for your time and your patience and your understanding with me today. I appreciate it, Mr. King. Do you have any further questions or concerns for me at this time? I'm clear. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. You too. Bye now. <sighs>